Uh, hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm going over the proclamation issued by Trump, and these are my preliminary thoughts. I'll spend some time on these, and I'll polish them for you by tomorrow or day after tomorrow, which is, uh, today is the 23rd. By 24th, I'll have a much more detailed workup of this. But looking at the the order, it basically extend the earlier order, which I have already posted in various social media, including my LinkedIn page. And if you want to find all our social media links, they are on our website, immigration.com. On the top right, you can go and click on that. I'm looking at what this proclamation says. So basically, he has suspended entry by H-1B people or H-4 people, which doesn't make sense. Why would you bar the entry of H-4 holders, spouses? Unless you said, well, if they have a work authorization, they can't come in. Or I can understand if they say you can't apply for a work authorization. But to keep families apart, that's just cruel. That makes no sense. How is that protecting the U.S.? Workforce. I think that should be open to challenge. And as I mentioned in a conference call, our association, American Immigration Lawyers Association, is preparing a lawsuit, they said, and I think this is going to get challenged quite quickly. Then they also don't want J visa holders who are working as au pairs, camp, camp counselors, summer work, travel, intern, trainee, teacher, etc. They also don't want L1 and L2 holders to come to the United States or follow to join. But remember, this order only affects, or this proclamation only affects those people who are, number one, outside the USA on the effective date of this proclamation. The effective date is 12.01 a.m. 24th June. They don't already have a non-immigrant visa. So basically, if you have a visa, even if you come in after the proclamation date, no problem. But if you don't have a visa or an advance parole, you cannot come in. Even if you have an advance parole, you can come in. So if you have an existing H1, L1, H4, L2 visa, you have no issues. And then it talks about how long this is going to last. There are some things here that bother me about EB2, EB3 labor certifications. I'm not sure how they are going to affect these, but Trump has asked the Department of Labor to look into POMs and labor certifications as well. I will have a much more elaborate, either a question and answer session or a write-up on my LinkedIn page, on my Facebook, as well as on our website within the next couple of days. But this should answer most of your questions. So people who are in the H-1B quota are not being affected unless they are outside the United States. In that case, they're going to have to wait once they get approved, which is in October, because this is going to last till December, unless something else comes up and he rescinds this. I am a little surprised that they have lumped all the jobs together because how can you lump a paucity or a lack of jobs, many of which could be not at all connected with H-1B visas. So what if you have dock workers or you had day, day laborers? How can you lump them together with H-1Bs? And there are studies that show that H-1B jobs or professional jobs create further jobs. And I really can't get into the the details of all this because I don't think there are very many bipartisan studies. So it's a very strange way to make policy. Policy without any consideration of the underlying goals to be achieved. So you could be you could be you could be correcting it with the wrong remedy and which is what it, it appears to be here. Let's see what a court has to say. I'll be in touch with you folks again soon. Stand by.